Hey everyone, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com and <laughs> here in the spring of 2020, a lot of us are finding ourselves at home, maybe a little more than we're used to. Uh, I personally am rocking some nice quarantine hair here because we're still under stay at home orders here in Virginia due to COVID-19. But we thought we'd use this opportunity to share some of our experiences with what you can do with your fountain pens when you're stuck at home. You can clean and organize your pens. If you're anything like me, you probably have pens all over the place, maybe in your pen cases that you just haven't wanted to clean, so they're just kind of sitting in there. You may have some tucked away in a drawer somewhere. Maybe it's fallen to the bottom of your backpack or your purse, or you may have it in some other unspeakable places. Well, now's the time to go digging all those pens out, give them a nice, fresh cleaning, a normal pen will take maybe three to five minutes to clean, and we have all kinds of great resources for you to do that. We have a great video on pen cleaning your cartridge converter, which is what most fountain pens are these days. Then we have some fountain pen 101 tips on cleaning your pens, all kinds of good resources. You can use water, maybe a little bit of dish soap in there. If you need a pen flush, if you have access to it, that's a great way to clean up all those old dried up pens that have been sitting there for a while. But either way, now's the time to do it. You might even be able to get your kids to help. This one might be a total shot in the dark, but I've been surprised at some of the things my kids have been able to help me with. Other things, I haven't been so surprised. a great time to catalog all of your pens. Maybe you've collected a few over the years and you have not really written them all down. You can create a list, maybe in a journal, or you can create a spreadsheet with some different facts and figures like the brand name, maybe when you acquired it, the type of nib that it has. It can be a great way just for you to get everything cataloged in one place. If you're like me, you might have trouble remembering what ink you had in what pen. So having an easy ink reference could be pretty handy for you. This is something you can create on swabs, maybe with a product like the coloring, or just on some note cards, or maybe inside a notebook or a journal. You can just write samples, you can do ink swabs, you can maybe even do a little mini ink review um, and some writing samples, just to get an idea of what that ink actually looks like on paper, something you can easily reference in the future, rather than having to sift through a bunch of bottles or samples next time you go to ink your pen. If you have a bunch of ink samples laying around, maybe gather them all together. You could try organizing those a little bit. You can get little containers, you know, there's vial holders you can get, or if you're brave enough, you can even try making your own vial holder if you really get that bored. One cool little trick when organizing ink samples is you can use those little paper ring reinforcers and you can put those on top of the vial if you have those handy. All right, this next one is less about the pens themselves and more about using them. You can actually write a letter. It's crazy, but my kids never really had an interest in writing letters until we started staying at home so much. So they've been writing letters back and forth to their friends. I've been writing more cards to my parents and other family members. Um, and it's a great way to connect with people. There's something different when you hold a tangible letter in your hand. I don't know, me, I'm very tactile. So when I actually hold a letter in my hand, it just feels different for some reason. And then you can hang on to it, you can discover it later it can be really kind of cool and meaningful. So a lot of people have found more meaning in writing letters these days, and it's something you can check out too. It's also a great opportunity for your kids to practice their handwriting and for you to have some fun family projects together. Another really helpful tool that you can use these days is a journal. Now you don't have to get real fancy with the type of journal that you have. Really, if you have anything laying around, you can use it. It's more about the act of writing this journal, especially when you are at home a lot with your thoughts, maybe you're going through some stuff and uh, it really helps to process that stuff. You can do a gratitude journal where you have prompts like today I'm grateful for dot 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 and then you just kind of go from there. Maybe you make a list of three to five things you're grateful for and try to make it different every day. Those things can be really, really helpful. It can actually help to lift your mood if you find yourself for prolonged periods of time being away from others. And lastly, you can get creative and maybe try some new writing related activities that you've never tried before. Maybe something like doodling or sketching. You can find some inspiration from folks like Peter Draws on YouTube. You can check out Instagram and Pinterest for all kinds of great hand lettering inspiration. There's all kinds of great tutorials and stuff there as well. 
you can get a little more formal with it and do some actual handwriting practice um, with Michael Saul's book, The Art of Cursive Penmanship, or maybe um, some formal calligraphy with Jake Weidman's video course. That's if you really want to get formal with it. Or you can check out bullet journaling. That's a really cool kind of productivity tool. Also kind of helps with mindfulness and can really help, especially when you've been kind of, you know, just disjointed and uprooted from your daily routine. That can be something to help ground you a little bit. So um, Ryder Carroll has his book, um, The Bullet Journaling Method, or he's got a great YouTube video. There's all kinds of great bullet journalists out there like Boho Berry that can help you uh, find some inspiration and uh, give you some instruction as well. Or if you don't want to be so formal about it, you can just grab some quotes or maybe some poems or some other text that inspires you and you can just transcribe it. You know, the act of actually writing it down uh, can help to just kind of transform it in your mind and it gives you something kind of different to do. And practice makes progress, so even if you're not trying to get masterful with your technique, it can still improve your writing just by practicing every day. So if you have some fountain pens and a little bit of time, I think you can find there's a number of very rewarding things that you can do with them while you're at home. We would love to hear what you've been up to, so go ahead and leave your comments on YouTube so that we can hear what you've been up to at home. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already. Be sure to check out GouletPens.com as well as the Goulet Pens YouTube channel for all kinds of great resources to entertain and educate you while you're at home. Thank you so much for watching and right on.